What is going on guys? It is Bucky and welcome to your, let's see, this is a third intermediate Java program tutorial. And in this tutorial I'm going to be going over a concept called recursion. Now recursion is usually a concept that gives a lot of people trouble because, I mean, in concept it's kind of confusing, but it's actually really simple once you see it in action. And that's what I'm going to be teaching you guys today. Now all recursion is, is it's pretty much a method that calls itself. So here's what we're going to be figuring out in this tutorial. Um, let me go ahead and give myself space. In case you didn't know what factorials are, like 5 factorial in math, it pretty much means 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. It pretty much means whatever number you tell me to give a factorial times itself by all the other numbers until 1. And obviously you don't times it by 0 because then anything factorial would be 0. So 5 factorial is 120 if you times all those together equals 120. Um, 4 factorial is 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, which is 24. 3 factorial is 3 times 2 times 1, if you want, which is uh, 6. And 2 factorial is 2 times 1, which is 2, on and on. You don't need to hear me do all that, but, you know, I just said it anyways. But anyways, let's go ahead and write a method um, displaying what recursion is. So, as I said... And as you can see, I probably should say this. I'm outside my main method right here. So here's my main, and I'm making a new method right here. And I'm going to name it public static long, and I'm going to name it fact. And it's going to take a number as its parameter. So as you can see, why a method calling itself would be useful in this case, because you don't really know what number they're going to enter to begin with. So say you were expecting them to enter 5 factorial. Well, you can just say, all right, take that number times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. I mean, this would be good in this case, but if they entered any other number by that, we can't really prepare for what number they enter, so we can't give it a set of numbers to multiply itself by. So this is why we need to use something called a recursion. Now, in case you guys didn't know, if you, you, if you do 0 factorial or 1 factorial, the answer is always 1. So let's go ahead and prepare ourselves for that. And let's go ahead and make if statement. If they enter a number, if their n is less than or equal to 1, which is either 0 or 1, what do you want to do? Well, all we want to do is return 1. Easy enough. Take care of the easy things first. And now, let's get into recursion finally. Else, what do we want to do? Well, we know factorial is pretty much that number that they gave us times the number below it. So, for example, if they gave us an 18, it would be that number times 17 and on and on, 16, 15, 14. So, else, what do we want to return? We want to return that number times the same function, fact, and, but we want to change it, the number of it. So here's what would happen. If they gave us a 0, 1, we're just going to return 1 as their answer. They're going to be happy. But if we gave them an 8, then it's going to return that 8 times 7. And it's going to call this method itself. So check this out. This method is called fact. And the method we called inside it is the exact same method. So what it's going to do is this. If you gave it like 5 to begin with, it's going to say, all right, I'm done with this. This isn't 1, so let's just go to this. Return 5 times 4 of this method. So it's going to pass 4 into this method. And now this method is going to have 4 in it. So it's going to return all this. Not, I mean, skip all this. Go, all right, for this one, I'm going to return 4 times 3 factorial. All right, keep going. I'm going to return 3 times 2 factorial call this method again return 2 times 1 factorial and finally when we get to 1 it's gonna say alright I finally have a number to return instead of returning your dang method again and again so I mean I'll show you guys later visually what it does and let me go ahead and run this one time so sit system out print line and let me just go ahead and do like the factorial for 5 or something just so you guys can see that this actually works and I'm not just BSing you. This is 120 right here. So again, what it did is we passed 5 in here. It wasn't any of this. So what it did is it returned 5 times 4 factorial. So it pretty much took this. When it got here, it called itself with a different parameter. So then it was 4 times 3 factorial. And it kept calling itself and itself until it got to one and then once it got to one it could fill in all the blanks in it 
it pretty much solved the puzzle and let me show you guys visually this might be a little easier so at first we call it five factorial all right so what our method did is it called five right here return n times factorial n minus one so five times four factorial and it doesn't have the result for this yet this is the result we're trying to achieve eventually but it doesn't have the result for this yet it needs to fill it in later it says no problem well now I'm just gonna call a new method to try to solve this called four times three factorial which is four minus one oops which is three factorial well now I need a result for three factorial so I'm gonna do three times two factorial well now I need a result for two factorial so now what I'm gonna do is two times one factorial well now I need a result for one factorial oh well look at what we have here this is called the base case and whenever I get to one I can just return a one eventually so it says alright one factorial equals one yeah baby now we have the answer of one now we can begin filling in the blocks that I, all of this, by the way, is stored in memory. So now that we finally found a real answer and don't have to call myself again, we can begin finding, or excuse me, filling in all the blocks for all of this. So let me go ahead and change this. And it says, all right, two times one is two. Problem solved, out of the way. Three times two factorial, well, since we know this is two, so this is three, times two which is six factorial four times three factorial is 24 or wait a minute I may be wrong four times yeah that's 24 bam problem solved this one and now that we know what four factorial is it's five times 24 which is 120 right there and oh you asked for five factorial yeah it's 120 so what it's pretty much doing here is it's trying to solve itself but it's storing what it doesn't know in memory and then when it finally founds finds a number that it can work with it tracks through all of the numbers again and steps its way back up until it can finally solve its answer or its problem so I know it kinda sounds confusing but I mean this is the easiest way I can explain it pretty much calling a method pretty much calling itself until it gets to a base case which is in this case one and then when it finally gets that number it can stop calling itself and start solving this problem so again don't forget to add a base case because again if you don't have a base case it's going to just keep going and going like an infinite loop and it will just never end so that is your quick tutorial on recursion if I made this confusing then leave me a comment and know but I want to know if I taught it right or not because I mean it's a really simple concept all it is is a method that calls itself until it gets to a base case and then when it does it can solve the problem so thank you guys for watching uh, let me know what you thought of this tutorial because I'm interested to hear so uh, thank you don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you next time